Welcome to Truth, Money, and Freedom. Today is Monday, the 18th of November, 2019. Hey gang, a few stories to share with you um, to hopefully uh, put an explanation point on on some things that are going on right now. Snyder, this is Michael Snyder, a great journalist, uh, reports on the economy often. He says, brace for impact. The U.S. economy is going down and it's going down hard. I'm going to read some of this to you guys. Um, Okay, it starts out like this. I have so many bad economic numbers to share with you that I don't even know where to start. I had anticipated that the U.S. economy slowdown would accelerate during the fourth quarter of 2019, and that is precisely what has happened. The Federal Reserve is trying to do all that it can to keep us from officially slipping into a recession, and the federal government is literally spending money as if tomorrow will never come. But all of that intervention has not been enough to reverse our economic momentum. We are really starting to see the conditions begin to deteriorate very rapidly now. And 2020 is already shaping up to be the most pivotal year for the U.S. economy since 2008. I want to concentrate on this word, officially. Um, the Federal Reserve is doing all it can to keep us from officially slipping into a recession. Well, uh, that's because they keep manipulating numbers. Uh, they keep printing more money. And that's literally what it comes down to. We're already in a recession. In fact, in in, in fact, we're in a depression. Uh, the numbers from John Williams at Shadow Stats already prove this. I don't think um, anyone who is following John Williams' work at Shadow Stats would actually even try to argue that point. Let me go on with a few others, uh, a few other paragraphs here. Let me start my analysis by discussing discussing how U.S. consumers are doing right now. According to CBS News, a major new study that was just released found that 70% of all Americans are struggling financially. And now this is from CBS News, I'm assuming. Uh, Many Americans remain in precarious financial shape even though the economy continues to grow, with 7 of 10 saying they're struggling with at least one aspect of financial stability, such as paying bills or saving money. There's no such thing as saving money in this environment, by the way. That's gone. Uh, that's gone. It will not return until we're in a new paradigm, a new financial paradigm. So don't worry about saving money. What you want to do is store your wealth. And that's gold and silver. Let me continue. The findings come from a survey of more than 5,400 Americans for the Financial Health Network a nonprofit financial services consultancy. The project, which started a year ago, is aimed at assessing people's financial health by asking about debt, savings, bills, and wages, among other issues. That sure doesn't sound like a booming economy, does it? Even though things are really tough for millions upon millions of American families, it appears that they're rapidly getting worse. In fact, we've just witnessed the largest decline for the Blom... It's not Blomberg, Bloomberg Consumer Index since 2008. So, um, and, and this goes on, and it's what you might expect from an article from um, uh, from Mike Snyder. But guys, I mean, this this stuff is actually um, starting to permeate. I think the mainstream media now. Now, the reason I bring this up is it's somewhat contrasty. Because the mainstream media has been telling us about consumer confidence being the highest it's been since 2000 and something. I I don't even recall anymore. Uh, Consumer confidence is a measure of of basically whether or not people feel good about going out and making purchases. That's all the the consumer confidence demographic is all about. And that's it. Now... The reason why people feel good about spending things is generally tied to the stock market, believe it or not. When they're driving home from work and they're listening on the radio, and I don't know how many people do that anymore. Most people are on their phones. And they hear about the stock market going up another 220 points, another, you know, 100 points. And, you know, it's just the sky's the limit on the stock market, right? Um, That's usually they feel rich because they have a 401k. And that's the middle class I'm talking about, by the way. And those are the ones feeling comfortable about buying things when they hear about the stock market going up. It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. It's, it's literally, as long as the stock market goes up, I am rich, right? 
Well, you got an IRA, you got a 401k. Technically, technically, you know, you're making money. Um, but will that money be there when you want to retire? And this is what uh, Lynette Zhang talks about at ITM Trading. Because when this system goes down, the reason it goes down, and this is a very important point, and it's very simple. And <laughs> a lot of you might be saying, hey, TC, you know, don't, you know, kick the dead horse, you know, with the dummy hat on. And I'm going to have to do it this one time because there may be someone in the audience here today who doesn't know. If no one wants to buy what you're selling in the stock market, uh, you will not get your money. <laughs> it's all about whether or not there's buyers on the other side waiting to buy what you want to sell. That's the way all markets work, including the stock market. So when you see these numbers go up the way they are, stratospheric, nosebleed section, hey, we're on a rocket ship going to the moon with the Dow Jones, don't you know? Not only that, but also the NASDAQ and the S&P. We're all new highs. Well, most of that, I don't want to say most of it, but a lot of it is now owned by the banks. You heard me correctly. The Federal Reserve prints money, gives it to the banks. Whether they print it physically or enter it as digits in a computer screen, it has the same effect. And they give it to the big banks, and the big banks go and buy stocks, bidding up the price of stocks with money that they didn't work for. They didn't have to do anything for it. Do you get free money like that? I don't. And unless you know, you're know you an insider or a banker, I suspect the answer is no, you don't. That's the new system we have, gang. That's the new system since 2008. If you don't believe me, look up Japan. Did you know that the Japanese government owns 80% of the Nikkei? You can look this up. I've done actual podcasts on this before. Search, you know, the YouTube channel. This is what's happening, gang. In the end, the banks own it all. They get it all. It's their money. It's their rules. It's their system. You know, they get it all in the end. So, okay, I don't want to go into the history of the game Monopoly. <laughs> Uh, in fact, I've already done that on several podcasts before, so I'm going to skip it this time. But there is a way to protect yourself from this, is to get your money outside of their system. And there's a couple of ways of doing that. There's cryptocurrencies, and there's gold and silver. Those are the options that you have to get out of that system before, you know, basically they own it all. Now, I... Personally, and once again, I need to go on here. I don't want to get in too much into this, um, on this aspect of it anyway, because I want to cover the, the riots that are happening, the protests that are happening worldwide, which is directly tied into what I'm talking about right now, by the way. Um, but things are not getting better. Things are actually getting worse. I don't care what the media says. I mean, I can, I can add. I can do basic math. And the math is telling me we're heading for a feces storm. When is the stock market going to crash? That's what everyone wants to know, right? You know, if you're an oracle, and if you can actually give the date and time a stock market will crash, people will listen to you. People, you know, will literally be, you know, banging down your door, you know, to, to listen to you some more, to watch your podcasts in the future. Guys, uh, unless, you know, someone... I don't know anyone who has actually successfully predicted, you know, the month and the date or whatever of a stock market crash, unless they're an insider. But I will tell you this, that um, there is a possibility that the stock market may never crash. And that's because they just keep printing money and buying it all up, bidding it up, making it impossible for any of us to buy, us mere mortals to buy. You know, that's for the likes of, you know, Jamie Dimon. Lloyd Blankfein, you know, uh, all the other big bankers. So keep that in mind going forward. We don't have to have a stock market crash for economy to be bad, to get worse and to collapse. We don't have to. So it, I, know, I realize that's what happened in 29, you know, and a lot of people do expect that it always starts with a stock market crash. And the bond market has been healed. The yield curve is gone, as most of you know, but the yield curve definitely was there. 
it was there. Okay, Civil Unrest is the New Normal Out There by John Rubino. Okay, well, we have civil unrest in about 19 different countries right now, and I'm not going to name all of them off, uh, but most of you have heard about this. Everything from Bolivia, Chile, Germany, the Netherlands, France, Hong Kong, um, Venezuela, Argentina. Yeah, all right, guys, uh, that's all I know right offhand right now, but... They're everywhere, and they're for different reasons. Um, for instance, in the EU, Germany, Netherlands, and, and France is a different issue. A lot of farmers are protesting because of EU red tape regulations um, that are actually costing them a lot more money to farm. And since there's regulations on pricing of food in the EU, they can't raise the prices enough to actually give these farmers an actual living uh, amount of money for how much it's costing them because of EU regulations to grow crops. So this is already, you know, the EU is hosed. You know, in England, I mean, I can't believe you guys are still in there, but I also understand, um, and I'll get into that in a second here. I want to talk about derivatives before I end the program today. But I want to read a few uh, little things in here that uh, John had thrown in here. I'll read the first one here. Um, this is getting ridiculous. Every few days, another country blows up as their citizens take to the streets with little warning and no apparent interest in a quick settlement. Here's the first part of the war civil unrest section of today's dollarcollapse.com links list. As you can see, the peasants have grabbed their pitchforks and besieged their betters on four uh, continents over a wide range of issues, which implies the stated cause in each is just an excuse. Next paragraph. The real grievance is a sense of an unresponsive elite that are sucking up all available wealth, leaving the vast majority, at best, zero upward mobility, and at worst, a return to servitude their parents had only recently escaped. To test the truth of this, watch what happens when the chastened government caves in on the initial issue. And instead of heading back home, the protesters ramp it up. That's right. Uh, who even remembers uh, what pulled uh, France's yellow vests into the streets? I do. I do. Pick me. Pick me. Um, it was gasoline taxes or petrol taxes or whatever they call it out there. Uh, the Macron government had spent months apologizing and offering a, a big new spending programs aimed at the protester stated concerns. Well, that's nice. Let's just, you know, go ahead and spend even more money and raise taxes even more when they're complaining about raised taxes in the first place. Yet the headline is about water cannons and flipped cars. Hong Kong repealed the law that ignited the riots back in June. Yet today the story is protesters shooting police with arrows and Chinese soldiers deploying to help clean up the streets. Uh-oh. Well, this is all tied into what I was talking about here, too, with Mike Snyder's story, Brace for Impact. Let's take a look at John William Shadow stats real quick here. I know I keep taking you back here, gang, but this is good stuff. Um, just in the last quarter, the GDP was recorded as being 0.3%. The government actually threw out a number um, that's much closer to what the truth is for the first time in a long time. Um, so if John Williams has not caught up with that yet. He's got to get the last quarter in there. But uh, basically, you're, you see, uh, right now, the red line is the official government numbers. And the red line is saying 2%. But actually, it needs to be right down about here, in that range right there, 0.03%. And that would show the real number, which is negative 2%, because there is a 4% lie. A f or a, yeah, I could say 4% lie. I don't want to go into percentages. Uh, about where the GDP is. So the actual GDP is actually at almost negative 4%. Guys, look how long this has lasted. This is, you know, this is getting serious. We have a, a economy that's falling apart right before our eyes, just like it did in 2008. And we have 
uh, riots and protesting going on all over the place. Problem, reaction, solution. Governments become more tyrannical when people do this. Um, when is it going to start in America? Well, we have a theory on that. I, I can't give you a date or a time, but when the top 10% own 70% of all the assets, that's generally when these things happen. And we're at 63.7% right now. The top 10% own 63.7%. And the more and faster the Federal Reserve prints money, whether it be paper or digits, it, it has the same effect. Uh, the faster they print money, the faster that number goes up. So remember that. Whenever there's money printing operations go on, it benefits the top 10%. It, it more specifically benef benefits the top 1%. But you guys get the general you know, idea of what I'm trying to say, I'm sure. And on to the next story, which is Hong Kong. Campus under siege is Hong Kong police battle protesters. It's getting serious out there, folks. And uh, the Chinese military has been called in. And this will not end well uh, because uh, these kids... I hate to say kids, these young folks in Hong Kong, they want freedom. And the government doesn't want them to have freedom because the more free the people are, the less control the government has over your life, the less they can tax you. That's what this is really all about, is having control of your time. The government controls your time through taxation. That's another weird concept we'll talk about another day. Part of what I call the matrix. But in Hong Kong, I think this is going to end with a massacre. I think it's probably going to end up being um, kids or young, young people, young adults, literally being shot down with machine guns in the streets like dogs. They're tired of this stuff, and they're willing to put up a fight, and we'll see how long it lasts. And Hong Kong, if any of you guys are watching this, my prayers go with you. Um, you're doing the right thing, and there's a price to be paid. We did it in America, too. We need to do it again right now. But no one, no one, um, or no, I don't want to say no one. There are people that are probably ready to do something like this, but it would be under more dire circumstances. And um, I pray for the people of Hong Kong, um, because this is escalating it's not de-escalating guys i'll link this all down below as i always do so you guys can read the stories and kind of i'd like to do a final summary this is all linked everything that i just did here today would seemingly unconnected stories are connected you know on a very basic level and that is the economy's falling apart and when the economy falls apart the governments become more tyrannical so that's what we're seeing. I haven't followed anything going on in D.C., by the way. I have no interest. None. You know, you think with truth, money, and freedom, we'd be covering, you know, the impeachment of Donald Trump. I really couldn't care less. I don't even see it as real. I mean, they're never going to remove him from office anyway. I think it's, it's a show. That's my opinion. And I'm allowed to have my opinion. But there are many, many, many things that lead me to that basic objective opinion and I hope I'm being objective about it I could go through all the many things but I don't think it's really necessary I'm keeping my eye on the prize here I'm looking at the rest of the world and this is exactly exactly what we expected we in truth money and freedom expected this exactly riots protests people literally um, trying to slip out of the bonds of government you know, regulation, government taxation, you know, whether it be farmers in the EU, you know, or college kids and, and young folks in um, Hong Kong, uh, where it's pretty much everyone. And I can't say that because it's like one third of the population in Hong Kong. It's got a lot of folks in there, you know, young to old. Um, Bolivia, you know, because of the president there, corrupt president there. Um, Argentina because of a collapsing economy uh, same thing with Venezuela and Chile you know these things are happening everywhere in Iraq protests going on in Iraq Iran I mean these things are happening everywhere and they're happening at the same time this is exactly what we expected so something that we saw happening literally 
five years ago, you know, um, we saw in our, in our mind's eye is happening now. So this is part of what we expected. The other parts haven't happened to the U.S. in time, but I'm U.S. centric. I'm not in France. I'm not in the Netherlands. I'm not in Hong Kong and I'm not in Chile. So I see things through the lens of an American, but I'm waiting for similar things to start happening here in America. But we're not there yet. Things are not bad enough yet. They keep printing money. They keep the stock market up. They keep everyone, everyone blinded to what's really going on in the banking sector, which is financial collapse. There's no other reason why this repo market is going on the way it is. And it's not for the stated re reasons to control or regulate interest rates. I don't think so, gang. I think what happened was the derivative market was starting to become worthless. They needed to keep them moving again. They needed derivatives to start flowing through the system again, you know, so that pension funds didn't go belly up right now. So I think the Federal Reserve is probably not buying back treasuries. I think they're buying back derivatives. And that could be any type of crap derivative. We can go with MBS, we can go with CDO, uh, we can go with um, the, new, the new ones they have out there, the subprime auto loan um, you know, derivative market or the credit card debt derivative market. They're creating products with this stuff, guys. And they're doing the same thing again. The banks just can't help themselves. It's all about creating something out of nothing and wanting a lot and everything in return for that something. Pension funds are going belly up. I've been reporting on this since we started the YouTube channel back in February. Things are happening right now. Now, when is it going to happen for us? When is it going to be bad for us? We'll see. Usually things like this start with a stock market crash, but I don't know if it will this time or not. I really don't. I could speculate. Um, but I just don't know. And even if we don't have a stock market crash, you know, we can have a, a, you know, a very, very bad situation in our economy, hyperinflationary economy, just like Venezuela. Their stock market never went down, never crashed. It just went up and up and up with their printing of currency. Okay, gang. Um, I think I covered pretty much everything here. Um, apart from, I want to remind you guys of something again. Um, I talked about the uh, money printing in the system along with, you know, the hyperinflation that comes with it. And it starts with big inflation, gold and silver and crypto. That's what you do to counter that. A little bit of cash on hand to take advantage of opportunity when it's there or to pay some bills if something bad happens. Storable food always because everyone's got to eat. And lead bullion. Get a firearm. Get a firearm. Learn how to use it. Train with it. Learn how to operate your firearm without even looking at it. You know, get that good with it. And I'm not saying practice in the dark. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying know your weapon well. And get some bullets. Get some, you know, some bullets. Pack them away like you do silver and gold. So, that's my advice. Um... The people in Hong Kong are using arrows on the police. It's because they're not allowed guns. And I'm not saying they should be shooting the police, but, you know, uh, they're shooting the police. That's what they're doing. They're using arrows to do so. Okay, uh, that's it for now. And um, I want to remind everything, everyone of one more thing. Epstein did not kill himself. It doesn't matter what politics um, you have, uh, whether you're right, left, center. It doesn't matter what color you are. It doesn't matter how much money you have. Epstein did not kill himself. Focus on that. He was killed. And unfortunately, maybe with that death, we cannot take down the pedophile network that is running the world today. So always remember what they did to Epstein and how they killed him basically to cover up the molestation and sex trafficking of small children. 
So, okay, gang, that's all I have for you for now. You all have a wonderful day. May God bless you all.